you know, I, I, you know, I, I, I made mention on yesterday the fact that a dear friend of mine passed and I got a call Sunday from his son telling me that he passed away that morning and, you know, he wanted to make sure I knew right away. And, uh, and then I started thinking about the fact that my, my mother, she'd gone on home some years ago to be with the Lord. But the thing that really got me more than anything else is the fact that my friend, younger than myself, but what God is showing me, people in my generation are leaving the planet. People in my generation are leaving the planet. So I'm at a place where I feel privileged and I feel blessed. Why? Because God is keeping me. He's keeping me for such a time as this. He's keeping you. And I'm not going to say that everything is the way you want it to be. I'm not here to say that life isn't difficult. I'm not here to say the pain is not real because pain, whoo, Lord Jesus, is real. Some of you know that. And I know that you know that. But there's a great God sitting high, looking low, who's made the earth his footstool. And he is so, so, so in love with you. So in love with you. So in love with you. You were created by God. Mm, mm, mm. You were created by God. And you were born to be different than anyone else. There's not another person on the planet like you. Never was, never will be. This is your season, my sister. This is your season, my brother. And we have to be able to rise up to the challenges that we're going to face in this life, what we're going to face in this year, this new year. And already, January 31st, 2023, the month is gone. 11 more months to go. But the question today is, what are you going to do with the rest of your life? Mm, mm -mm. I can say what you're going to do with the rest of the day, what you're going to do with the rest of the week, the rest of the month, the rest of the year. But really, when, when it's all said and done, your life is going to tell a story. And what are you going to do with the rest of your life? We don't know when God's going to call us home. And that's a reality because the reality is this. You were born to die. Lord Jesus. Born to die. So this is not our home. This is not your home. You know, and so many are trying to make themselves so comfortable down here. They're putting up with stuff, tolerating stuff, and don't realize this is not your home. But I'm here to remind you, Lord Jesus. Let me remind you of something, my sister, my brother. And I tell you this every day. You are amazing. You are amazing. And let me throw in, let me add, you are uniquely different from everybody else. Uniquely different from everybody else. But you have the awesome responsibility of being able to identify your uniqueness. Why are you here? What are you gifted to do? What is your purpose? Uh, you, you have to be able to identify your uniqueness. And so many have wasted so much time trying to figure out other people. They haven't taken enough time out to figure out themselves. Are you hearing me this morning? See, and that's what this is about. You have so much more. You are so much more than what you are right now. I, I'm going to say that again because I don't want you to miss this. You are so much more than what you are right now. Man, man, I can only imagine. Oh, if you can only imagine, if you can only see what God has put together, you are so much more than what you are right now. And I know all the ducks are not lined up in a row. You didn't cross all your T's and dot all your I's, still making mistakes, still focusing on 
your handicaps or your shortcomings or your money might be funny, change might be strange. Oh, I, I don't have nobody to help me. I don't have no man. I don't have no woman. I'm not married, won't be married, want this, want that. So much going on in this life to try to reshape us and to take us away from God's intended purpose and plan for our lives. But my brother, my sister, you are so much more than what you are right now. You are so much more than what you see right now. Mm -mm -mm. You see, and we have to be able to see this thing now. See, and, and see, you're looking through the natural eye when God is saying you got to be able to see this thing in the spirit. There is so much more to you than what you are right now. You are so much more than what you might even believe about yourself. Mm -mm -mm what you believe about yourself because you've been knocked down, but you know the amazing thing about it? You still getting up. I mean, people have talked about you. You've been in some relationships that have been strained. It might've started off nice, but along the way, Lord Jesus, instead of growing closer together, you begin to grow apart and it's strained the relationship. Lord Jesus, so many things have happened in this life to try to redefine us and to take us away from what God wants us to be. I'm here to tell you, my sister, you are a designer's original. I'm here to tell you, my brother, you are a designer's original. A designer's original. And a designer is God. And God does not make a mistake. It is impossible for God to make a mistake. Everything that God does, he does on purpose. And you are part of his plan. Lord Jesus, you are part of his plan. And, 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 and what makes you so amazing and special is the fact that you are a designer's original. You're so unique, so special. See, your individuality makes you unique and different. Are you hearing me? Different from everybody else. We try, you know, you look at the young people today, they trying to be like the images they see on television. They want to be like the, 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 the models in the magazines. They want to be like this. They want to be like that. They want to, we want to, want to be a copy of other people. And hey, God says, no, I, I, hey, I, I created you to be a designer's original. There's not another person on the planet like you. Why are you trying to make yourself comfortable trying to be like somebody else? When, man, when there's so much more to you than what you can see right now. Man, oh man, oh man. My, my theme for today is you are a designer's original. You are a designer's original. Matter of fact, that closing word for yesterday was you have to guard your anointing. Lord Jesus, you have to guard your anointing. Because if you don't guard that anointing, you will never come into your true purpose. Whew. See, and, and when I say that you are, you know, so unique and different, that makes you special. You got to understand you're special to God. First and foremost, Abba Father, our Father, which art in heaven, you are special to God. And then, those of you who have family, Lord Jesus, you are special to family. You are special to your family. They are depending upon you. They are looking to you. And this is why we need to be rooted and grounded in this word of God. This is why we have to be able to, 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 to maintain that relationship with the one who gives us strength. And matter of fact, the Bible says his joy, my, I'm talking about that unspeakable joy, that joy that's able to take your places where, mm, 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 where the product, where the drugs, where the look, alcohol, where the people, where nobody else can take you. I'm talking about God is able to do for you what you can't do for yourself. And why do I say that? Because many of us know we're broken. I know I'm broken, but I can't fix myself. I, I, I just don't know how to fix myself. I don't know how to make myself better. But I'm here to tell you this morning, all you got to do is come to Jesus. 
come to Jesus. See, 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 you, you, you're not just special to God, to your family. You also special to your church. Mm -mm. Your church will not be the same without you. You bring that something that is so uniquely special and, and different that you make your church stand out. Believe me when I tell you now. You are that one that can make a difference. So special to your ministry, Lord Jesus. And many of you viewing this on YouTube, many of you hearing me on the prayer line this morning, you have a ministry that needs you. Mm, mm, mm. And you're standing out. Oh, God, I thank you, Jesus. And the question today is, what are you waiting, some of you, what are you waiting on? What are you waiting for? See, 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 shoo. <laughs> we don't know what tomorrow holds. See, I do know who holds my future, and that's God. But the real deal is, I don't know how much time I have here to do what I'm sent here to do. So let me get busy now about my father's business. Thank you, Jesus. And if Jesus can say that at a young age, 12 years old, I'm about my daddy's business, my father's business. See, 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 let, let, me, let me put it like this. You are here to make a difference. Now, now I want you to catch this now because I don't want you to miss this. You are here to make a difference. You can either live your dream or you can live in your fears. I'm going to say that again because I do not want you to miss this. You can either live your dream or dreams, or you can live in your fears. See, and, and we know, hey, God is not the author of confusion. Are you hearing me? See, and it's the enemy that wants you to live in your fears. It is God who wants you to live in your dream. Are you hearing me? But let me say this, because this is what's, this is what it all mounts up to. This is it right here. This is the bottom line. In order to live your dreams, you first have to wake up. Lord Jesus, you have to wake up, my sister. You have to wake up, my brother. We walking around, some, some are walking around in a nod. Some are walking around with their eyes wide shut, waiting and waiting and sitting and, 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 and not doing what they need to do. Need to, ooh, Lord, wake up, my sister. Wake up, my, this is your season. My opening verse of scripture is going to come from 2 Corinthians 4 and 7. But we have this treasure. Mm, mm, mm. Did you hear what I said? Did you hear what Paul said? You have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us, not of ourselves. We are troubled on every side. Thank you, Jesus. That's right. That's right. You're going to deal with some stuff now. You're not going to go through this life and not deal with something. Are you hearing me? Confront, face, you know, wrestle with something. All of us are going to wrestle with something. But I'm thanking God I'm still here. Mm, mm -mm. See, see, be thankful unto him and bless his name. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, so that the life also of Jesus, the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. In other words, you, in order to reign with him, you're going to have to suffer suffer like him. Are you hearing me? We're going we gonna to deal with some stuff now. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God is faithful. God is faithful. He is able to deliver us from them all. But now you got to want to be delivered. Mm, mm, mm. See, 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 this is your season to step into your purpose. This is your season to, to, to not just strive after the things that would be pleasing to the eye, pleasing to you, but I'm striving after those things that would be pleasing or doing those things that would be pleasing to God. Mm, mm, mm. 
You are not here to live up to anybody else's expectations. So you trying to pacify, you know, yourself by, by pleasing him, her, this, that. Mm -mm. You're not here to live up to anybody else's expectations. You are here solely to please God. And then let me add also to become the best version of yourself. You know, you can think about how many years you've been ministering, how many years you've been singing, how many years you've been doing this, how many years you've been working on cars or working with computers, how many years you've been on your job, how many years, you know, hey, I want to become the best version of myself. But in order to do that, you need to discover mm, that person you were sent here to be. Not recreate yourself, as I said earlier, into the false images that the world will, you know, throw at you. Mm -mm. You want to become the best version of yourself. That man, that woman that God sent you here to be. And understand it. Understand now. You were sent here for a reason and you're going to be here for some seasons. Reason and seasons. Are you hearing me? You are here for a reason. And you're here for some seasons. You have to make the most of the time that you have here. Thank you, Jesus. That's why I, I'm, I'm, I'm privileged. I say, Lord, I thank you. I'm so glad I woke up before it got too late. I'm so glad I come to a place in my life where I was able to, to, to make it to the fork in the road. And I made that choice to follow Jesus and to walk away from that other. Mm -mm, mm -mm. That other spirit. No, I, I can't. I don't want to live like that no more. Mm -mm. It's see, because the Bible tells me apart from God, we can do nothing. But with him, all things are possible. I want to step into the realm of the, of the, of the possible. I want to be able to do those things that Lord Jesus, when I leave here, I want to be able to say my cup is half, is my cup half empty or half full. I want to do, ooh, Lord Jesus. I want to be able to do more of what I have dream more of what I've been desiring, more of what I've been believing in God for, I want to be able to achieve something or at least die trying. Thank you, Jesus. So I can at least say I did my best. I did my best to, to be my best. See, and we don't have a lot of time to do what, we, what we're sent here to do. I'm going to say it again. You don't have a lot of time to do what you were sent here to do. And this is why it's so very important. It's not about trying to be like anybody else. It's not about trying to be a carbon copy of anybody else. If I want to be like anybody, let me be like Jesus. Mm, mm, mm. See, you were sent here to become the best version of yourself. I, I want you to think about, just think about this. Think about this. I'm going to give you three things to think about. You might want to jot it down. You might want to make note of it. First of all, why did God make you different? See, see, sometimes we just need to be able to sit, get in a quiet place, have that little talk with God, maybe read the word, you know, whatever, however, you know, you choose to, to come into his presence. And then, God, why did you make me different from everybody else? Why did you make me different from him, from her? Why, why, why am I different than the person that I used to be? And, and I might see myself as not as good as I was, once was, but I'm here to tell you today, you're still here. And that means you have the potential of being even better than what you were. It's a matter of perspective, how you choose to look at it, your situation, how you choose to look at life. That second thing I want you to think about, point that I want to make is, what am I not doing that I should be doing? What are you not doing that you should be doing? Mm. See, see, these are things that we need to really be able to ask ourselves because you know something? It's something about this flesh. You know, Paul said it. He says, why am I doing those things that I don't want to do? And then he answered his own question because he said, it is the sin that is in him. See, and, and you have to realize your flesh 
it's going to work against you. It's going to work against the good that you want to do. And if you're not able to identify, if you're not able to see this, acknowledge this, you're going to stay on that road going into, you know, I'm not saying going into crazy, but going into that, you're going to stay on that road that's going to be of no real positive effect. In other words, you don't want to just be busy. You want to be effective. You got folk in the body of Christ that are busy, but they're not effective. Doing this, doing that, going here, going there. But they're doing it for themselves or for whatever. But they're not doing it to glorify God. You want to be effective at what God has sent you here to do. And, and then let me, let, me, let, me, let me give you this third point that I think is so important. Am I comfortable with myself? You need to ask yourself, are you comfortable with yourself? Are you comfortable with your life? Ooh, Lord Jesus, are you comfortable with yourself? Are you comfortable with your, with your life? If not, why not? If not, if you're not comfortable with yourself, if you're not comfortable with your life, why not? Why not? If not, why not? Why am I not comfortable with myself? What do I need to do to make it better? What am I, what am I giving place to? Hey, my wife talked yesterday about the, 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 the stinking thinking. See, if you're giving place to stinking thinking, hey, you're going to be in a dark, in a cold, in an uncomfortable place. Why? Because you're giving place to the enemy. The Bible says, give no place to the devil. Thank you, Jesus. Keep your mind stayed on Jesus. I'm going. I, hey, it says keep your mind stayed on him. Keep your mind stayed on Jesus, and he will keep you in perfect peace. That's it. See? So if I'm not comfortable with, with myself, I have the responsibility of doing what I need to do to bring myself to a place where I can say life is working for me now. Because I don't have a lot of time, as I said earlier, to do what I need to do. Thank you, Jesus. And that's why I thank God for the examples. I thank God for the models that he's placed in our lives so that we can kind of like, hey, you know, I, I, if, 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 if that can work for them, it can also work for me. So, and God is good. See, and, and, and when I realize that I don't, I'm not here to act like anybody else, I'm not here to look like anybody else, it's because I'm different from everybody else. It's because you are different from everybody else. Are you hearing me? You don't even sound like nobody else. You're wired different from everybody else. You know, and things that and get one person angry, another person will say, I'm, I'm just going to pray. See, you're not that old, per that person that you used to be because folk used to say some stuff, it would tick you off and you ready to, mm. but now I'm just going to pray for them. Lord Jesus, Lord, give them a mind, give them a heart, give them a spirit, help them to see what, you know, what they can't see about themselves that they need to fix. And I realize I can't fix nobody because I'm having a hard enough time fixing myself lord jesus see and, and and you could be misunderstood you know and many of us are misunderstood by others mainly because i'm operating on a different level or a different frequency than than they are but that doesn't make me you know let's just less than anybody else i realize that we're all different that's my uniqueness that's H. And when I can tap into this thing here, boy, oh, Lord Jesus, that's what's going to enable me to rise and shine and give God the glory. When I can come into an understanding of my purpose and I can add some passion to my purpose, man, oh, man, oh, man. See why? Because I want to live my dream and not my fears. I want to live my dream and not my fears. See, and we can go on and on and on with the different things that you can do that will uniquely define you, set you apart from other people. And you have to be able to see that. And when you look at what you've been through, Lord Jesus, look at what you've been through. 
and and let me throw this in because I think this is so very important because some of you are still going through. That's right. Some of you are still going through pain in the back, pain in the chest. My heart might not be, you know, I got cancer. I just got over COVID, but I still got some after effects from COVID. I'm dealing with this. I'm dealing with a relationship with a man. I'm dealing with a relationship with a woman. I'm dealing with my child, my children. I'm dealing with people on the job. I'm dealing with people on the church. I'm dealing with that next door neighbor. I'm dealing with, I mean, so much stuff coming at us. But guess what? You're dealing with it. If you're dealing with it, that means you're still here. But now you want to deal with it in a Christ-like way. This is why this word of God is so, so very important. Mm. Study to show yourself approved. A workman not ashamed, rightly dividing that word of truth. Thank you, Jesus. Why? Because only the truth will set you free. See, so, so, so I realized that in my going through, when I can lift up a, a worship and a praise, ooh, man. See, and, and even my worship and praise is different than anybody else. Some, mm, Lord, some can hoop, some can holler, some can sing, some are silent. But whatever you're called to do, however way you do it, give, oh, bring the glory to God. Worship him, praise him. Oh, when the praises go up, the blessings come down. And look what God says in, in Psalm 139 and 13. See, see, for you form my inward parts, you covered me in my mother's womb. Ooh, Lord, go ahead, David. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. My sister, my brother, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Don't you know who you are? Lord Jesus. And that's where many of us fall short because we don't see our uniqueness. We don't see our, uh, you know, our individuality. We, we, we don't see that God has set us apart from everybody else. But we're to come together, working together, the Lord Jesus. We can't even begin to build because we don't know how to get along. You look at what is going on in the world, how we all of the killings and the shootings. And I mean, man. I mean, and, and we're doing this to people that we don't even know or care about. We're killing our children. Going into the schools with guns and, ooh, Lord Jesus. Going to a, a movie house. Going to uh, 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 some kind of a concert or something. And folk just start popping off shots. And uh, it's just crazy out here today. You, you look at what is going on in Ukraine. I want that country. I want that nation. I want to take it for myself. And, mm, and, and if I can't have it, nobody's going to be able to live there. I'm going to kill up everybody, shoot up everybody. And life is, hey, hey, life is so precious. My brother, my sister, you have so much to be thankful for. Aren't you glad you don't lay your head in, in Ukraine? I mean, I pray for him and I grieve for him, but I'm thanking God for where I'm at. I might not have had the best coming up. I, I might have came up, you know, uh, uh, with my mama, don't know who my daddy is. And, and that's me. I don't know about nobody else. That's, you know, Lord Jesus, I, I was looking up the faces of men wondering, is that my daddy? Is that my daddy? And then God said to me, I'm your daddy. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to do for you what nobody else can do for you. And he brought me to a place where I can, I can love myself, where I can appreciate myself, where I was able to let go of the past hurts and the pain and the shame. And that's what this is about. Lord Jesus. And God is so good. And he's faithful. He's not faithful sometimes. He's faithful all the time. And then look what he says. Look what he says. My frame was not hidden from you. When I was made in secret, all of us have come out of a dark place. Lord Jesus. All of us have come out of a dark place. In order for that seed to grow, it got to be buried in the dirt, in a dark place, and watered. Are you hearing me? And we, in our mother's womb, in a dark place. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth, your eyes saw my substance. Even there, God saw what, mm, 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 
what was going to become of me, what was going to become of you. Being yet unformed and in your book, they all were written, the days fashioned for me, when as yet there were none of them. How precious also are your thoughts to me, O God. How great is the sum of them. If I should count them, they would be more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with you. Lord Jesus. I mean, David, he, he's a, he was a dreamer. Lord Jesus. David was a dreamer. See, and he says, when I'm awake, I'm still with you. Mm, mm -mm. Whether you are asleep or awake. And I'm here to tell you now, God can get a good word to you in your sleep. But now, are you going to do what God is telling you to do? But, and then understand this, it's so very important that you understand or you know the voice of the one who is speaking to you. Jesus says, my sheep, his sheep know his voice. And a stranger you will not entertain. Saints, you are a designer's original. And I can't say it enough that God made you. He created you to be different. You are not an accident. And you're definitely not a mistake. Are you hearing me? See, so, so we have to really consider and take a real good look. The Bible says, you know, examine yourself to see if you're still in the faith. So, so, so am I doing what I need to do right now to make my life work according to God's plan? Or am I just doing me? See, because you know something, so many of us are going through life complaining about how hard it is. And I'm not here to say life isn't hard now because life can be hard, it can be difficult. And but when you look at a lot of the stuff that we're dealing with now, it could be, uh, uh, let's just say, an offshoot of some of the bad choices or decisions that I've made in the past, not realizing I was sowing to the wrong stuff. And that wrong stuff became my harvest that I was reaping that I don't want to deal with today. See, and, and, and you know, because Lord knows we can come up, oh, nobody know what I'm going through. Man, nobody know what I'm going, I mean, we can get on that phone Instead of going to the throne and we can complain and we can, you know, we, hey, saints, we got to come to Jesus. That's it. You go through your situ those situations that are designed to break a good man down. God will turn that situation around. What is meant to tear you down. God will use it to build you up, to make you stronger. And I'm here to tell you, you are amazing, my sister. You are amazing, my brother. Uh, I, I, I'm not even going to let that go. Nobody know what I'm going through. And, and, and nobody, hey, I don't have nobody here to help me. Whew, Lord. Well, I mean, I can't even believe a Christian will even talk like that. Somebody who's in Christ, you know, see, it's, and, and because of what I'm going through, I find myself mad with the world. I'm mad. I'm upset with everybody. And phew, Nothing seemed to be going right for me. Uh, oh, man. See, you have to be willing to do what, what, you know, what, what, what you need to do in order to bring about that change. Because understand this, there's no such thing as good luck, bad luck. Uh-uh. Either you are blessed or you're cursed. Are you hearing me? You are either blessed or you're cursed. I want to walk in the blessings of God. There's no gray areas. It's just like when God says, either come hot or cold. If you don't come lukewarm, because he said he'll screw you out of his mouth. So you have to make a decision. I'm going, I'm going to trust me and my house. Uh, another, I'm going to trust God today. I'm going all the way with Jesus. No more of this. Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Nobody knows my troubles, my problems. Nobody, nobody, nobody. No, if, let me tell you something. Nobody really care because they're dealing with their own stuff. I can't say they don't care, but the real deal is nobody can really do nothing about it outside of God. So go to the one who's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above mm, what you can ask or think. See, because understand this, you don't have a lot of time to figure this, to figure life out. I'm going to say it again. You're here to figure life out believe it or not. 
And, and your job is to discover your authentic self, your authentic self, the true you, the real you. I mean, look here. Mm. You know, I'm I'm mentally preparing for this funeral, this home going service that I have to that I have to do. And and the Lord brought to mind the whole world's a stage and everybody's playing a part. The whole world's a stage and everybody's playing a part. You know, and, and, and the richest place on the planet is not the stock market on Wall Street, not the diamond mines in South Africa or Kuwait, not the oil wells. Mm, 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 mm. Are you hearing me? See, you have to understand the richest place on the planet is in the neighborhood cemetery. Your neighborhood cemetery is the richest place on the planet. Why? Because there are so many in the grave today who's gone, who left here without writing that book, left here without singing that song, left here without preaching that message, left here without starting that business, left here without starting that ministry, left here waiting for something to happen. Mm -mm. that wasn't going to happen until they rolled up their sleeves and initiated that move that needed to be made to bring about that which should be, which should have been done some time ago. Saints, we don't have a lot of time to get it right. And while we're traveling down this highway called life, God wants you to know you're going to have to trust in him. You're going to have to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. Matter of fact, Mother Mother Whitehead shared that about two, three weeks ago. I, I carry what you say in my spirit. And I try to identify the person that said, Mother White said, uh, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. You have to trust in him with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. And that's it, saints. See, because that's, that's that's your, your 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 let's just say that's your jumping off place or you know or, or, or your get out of jail card whatever you don't have to stay in the dark place you don't have to suffer like Paul suffered in that Philippian jail and he was able to praise God him and Silas was able to praise God in that Philippian jail are you hearing me? And some of us, instead of complaining, if we can praise God, we can praise our way out of whatever it is we might find ourselves in that's uncomfortable. Lord Jesus, trust God and know that his plan and his purpose for your life is better than what you can come up with for yourself. Trust God, saints. Why? Because you are a designer's original. So knowing that you are designed as original, that means he knows what you're here to do. He understands your purpose and the nature of your design better than you do. You have to learn how to trust. Oh, are you hearing me? Trust, trust in the Lord. Trust your gut, what you feel in your gut. Oh, I feel like I should do this. I feel like I should do that. Some of us are hesitant. The enemy was able to talk us out of doing those things that God has called us to do. He's planted that seed of doubt, double-mindedness. It didn't work the last time, so it's not going to work this time. The devil is a liar. God is giving us another chance to get it right. What happened to the dream? Don't abort the promise or abandon the dream. This is your season. This is your time to rise and shine and give God the glory. Thank you, Jesus. Don't stop chasing your dream. But in order to chase your dream, you have to be able to wake up. Mm, mm, mm. You have to be able to wake up, my sister. You have to be able to wake up, my brother. See, and, and when I say wake up now, I don't just mean wake up from a sleep. Wake up from the slumber. Uh-uh. Wake up from the things I've been saying about myself. Wake up from the stuff that is causing me to doubt myself. Wake up from the stuff that is that has invaded my body and, and make me think or doubt or feel like I'm less than. I'm here to tell you, greater is he that is in you 
then he that is in the world, that one who's after you, trying to break you down, I'm here to tell you God is going to use that to build you up. He gonna make you greater. The your future is ooh, look, your future is calling you by name. The best version of yourself is still ahead in your future. If you can believe it, you can receive it. All things are working together for the good for those of us who love God and are called according to His purpose. Saints, God is not through with you yet. I'm I'm, I'm telling you now, God is not through with you yet. Mm, mm, mm. You see, we can sometimes get these little titles or we can get these positions or these jobs and think that we have arrived. I'm here to tell you, God is not through with you yet. You still got a ways to go. Why? The mere fact that he woke you up this morning, you should be thankful unto him and bless his name. Because truly, he has been good to each and every one of us. Thank you, Jesus.